Hey, and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video, we'll be covering everything exporting. So if you go to File and Export, there's all kinds of different options that you might want to choose to export your model. Maybe it's just an export of everything that's model, like 3D. Maybe it's uh, a CAD, so the result will be 2D. Maybe it's uh, to a database, to sending all of your data or rooms or information. I'm not gonna cover everything in like perfect detail. So I'll end up covering mostly CAD formats and FBX and images or whatever, but a lot of it's database based, meaning that you're sending all of your information to a specific database or place to where you can process that data. And honestly, most of the time, I'm not gonna be dealing with that, if ever dealing with that. And if anyone else is dealing with that, it's they're kind of aware of how to do that already. So that said, I do want to cover many of the CAD formats. So let's start with that. There's a DWG, DXF, DGN, and ACIS or SAT file. If you've imported anything SketchUp into Revit, you might notice that that comes in as an SAT or ACIS file. That's just a different CAD format. Thankfully now with Revit 2020, we can import SketchUp. So we don't have to worry about that so much, but DWGs, you're probably going to have to still export lots of your views to DWG because if, it, if you're anything like me, you've got consultants that still use CAD and plenty of people that still use CAD. So if I go to DWG export, it's fairly straightforward, but I still want to go over it. We've got the select export setup. I, everything is it's in session. There's really nothing specific here. These are all the different options as far as how your model or this view in this case will export to a 2D CAD file. I would not, I wouldn't bother changing these things. If you need to go through and say, I need to make sure my doors show up this way or look this way or have this color, whatever, you can do that. I wouldn't necessarily take the time to do that myself because it's going to take care of it for you. There's a nice default to it. But if I go to export and I, I can choose the current view or the current sheet and I can also use the different sets that I've created. So I'm going to actually close this right now. But in a previous video, I looked, I went over the prints and I'll link that in the description below and in the cards up right now, there's a link to the print video. But in the selected views and sheets is a, they're called sets. So I can select different sets of views that I want to print or export or whatever I want to do and that's based on what I have checked and saved as a certain set. So I'll close that and you can see I've got them saved as different sets. So I can go to export, back to CAD formats and DWG and right now I just want to print this this single view as a DWG. So at this point I can hit next and I'm prompted now to save it somewhere. So I'll just save it on my desktop, the CAD format. See if you need to change the file year to make sure it works on in specific years, do that. That's where you do that. Naming convention, don't need to really mess with that at all. Export views on sheets and links as external references. If you start exporting sheets and views that have links in them, that's when things get a little hairy and that's when uh, this export will automatically XREF them into that CAD format for you. So they're set up in the same way they are as Revit, where you have a model, a linked element. You'd have your CAD export and your linked element as well. That's checked by default, so it, it's probably good to leave that so you're di differentiating your model versus a link, where, whether it's in Revit or in the CAD export. So I can hit OK, and at this point, it's just going to export. There's nothing else to it. I'll go to my desktop and we can see that I've got my all my prints from a previous video but I've got my CAD formats there of course the PCP is going to come with it you could just delete that and so what you'd end up sending is that DWG right there so just like before if I go to export and CAD formats DWG I can change that to test in this in this case it's going to print or export all of these sheets at one time. I, I can quickly include them or disclude them here. That's not a big deal. I can also change that to views, so it's gonna be all these different views. And the type is nice because it's gonna kind of try and give you an idea of what the type that it is. 
So in this case, I've got these four elevations and all these plan, all these plan views, RCPs. You can check none from there. Show and list views in the set. It, it's just, it's just kind of a different way of filtering through this specific set that you've chosen. So at this point, I can hit next, and now I'm prompted to choose a name. In this case, let's choose CAD. I'll name it CAD, and I'll hit OK. And so my result is going to be that I'm going to get the prefix of CAD along with the sheet names in this case. So that's great. And don't ask me why the logo came with it. I, I don't know. Actually, I do know. That's because these are all sheets. And if I go to that sheet, I can see that there it is, <laughs> the logo. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend uh, exporting CAD views from sheets because you're going to end up exporting all of your sheet data and maybe you have a seal on there and you don't want to send a seal on a CAD necessarily. So what I like to do is instead of going to and exporting the entire sheet, if you have a view on a sheet that you need to export as CAD, you can simply go to the sheet, expand it and you can see the individual views. Now I'd go to the individual view and export this just so I'm not sending seals or any title block data that I don't need. That, that'll be CADs, and all these CAD exports are going to act the same, look the same. It's just the different file format that you get in the end. The DWF, again, this is a database driven. I've never used this. If you have a database set up, that's awesome. FBX, this is really honestly my favorite and most usable in my mind from a modeling standpoint. So I've got my model and everything here. It's all modeled in 3D. And you can only see this option in 3D. So you can see it says FBX and it's actually lit up and says save a 3D view as an FBX file. So what is an FBX file? F FBX file is a very old file. I think it was like early 2000s it was established. But it's actually called a film box file. And that doesn't quite make sense. But regardless what it is, it's going to take all your 3D elements and it's going to save them as a 3D model that is usable in like really almost every 3D modeling program. So if you're going to take this to Rhino, you can take this to 3ds Max, you can take it to much, all kinds of different 3D modeling softwares very quickly using the FBX format. And natively out of Revit, there's not a great way to get a 3D model into a different program besides FBX. So this is why I end up liking this. So you'll choose the name of the file format, you'll choose whether that's a specific year, whether it's 2015 and previous, or if it's just a regular FBX file, I like it to be regular, kind of work better, and don't have to use such older files. Naming, again, I don't mess with that either. Use level of detail, and without boundary edge, I don't, I, I don't need the boundary edge, so I just, I want it without the boundary edge, but you can choose to have it with or without the boundary edge. That's on you. But use level of detail. The level of detail comes into play more so I've, I've encountered it with Max. You can bring in this Revit model in Max as an FBX and once you've determined the level of detail of certain elements, you can that can help optimization in Max based on the level of detail of certain elements. So I'm not going to cover that, but it's, it's an option that you can choose. So just choosing that will allow you to use it. And after that, I can hit save. And there's really nothing else to that. I can go back to my desktop and see that I have my FBX right there. Now let's look at an XML file. It's, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to give you those energy settings, the different rooms, space volumes, things that you might need. Probably more so from an engineering standpoint, but it's just going to save all that information into an XML file. There's really nothing to cover there. Of family types, it's going to export, it's going to do exactly what it says. Export all the different family types that you have in the current model, but as a text file. I've never really needed to do that, but if you wanted to track things for some reason, or if you have some software that's going to compare a text file to another one, you can, you can do something like that to see what's in your model. Um, IFC. IFC is kind of important, industry foundation class. It's really one of the oldest and earliest types of BIM file formats. So if you were going to send this to someone else or really has to do with more of a database again, this is going to be all your BIM information, all your building information modeled 
information there. It's going to be in an IFC file. You might receive some IFC files and you can import those into Revit, but that's how you export it. There's really nothing to it. You're choosing the file, the project, and you could modify the setup, which is all the information that you might include in the IFC file, whether it's level, level of detail, whether you're exporting 2D plane elements from views. It's just all kinds of different things that you might export to a specific database. Going back to export, ODBC database. Again, this is just, it is database. It's actual database. Open database connectivity is what that stands for. And it's just another way of getting all your information to a database. Maybe you want to track it all. Maybe you have this database set up to, to look at all the analytics of what you have in your model over time. That's where I might use that. But again, I've, I really never used anything database wise, at least from an architecture standpoint and being an architect. But if you have great images, this is also pretty helpful, images and animation. I remember in 2008 when I first started using Revit, I did a walkthrough in Revit. I have, after I did that first walkthrough in Revit, I vowed to never do another one just because of what it is and what it takes. So I would never use a walkthrough just because of all the technologies out to better get some better walkthroughs. It's just, it's honestly painful to create and to watch. <laughs> but the main thing here is the image. Of course, you can make a solar study if you're looking for something like that. That's pretty self-explanatory. But an image, it's going to use the very, very similar properties to the print dialog, which is nice if you're familiar with those. You change the output, which is just the file name, where it's going, all that. You can choose the current view or current window, which you're going to choose and show everything in the entire view. You can do visible portion. So if you have zoomed into a specific place, it's going to only show that portion. And again, we have the option to choose our different sets here. If I wanted to choose those, those different sets, I can choose to make images out of all my sheets for some reason. But for this, I'm going to use current window. I'm not going to mess with any of these options because they're the same if they're the same as the print, and I don't need to change any of them. But the image size is really what matters. You can take this to the moon and back if you want to infinity. But what I like to do, just so it's bigger than normal, I like to use uh, 20 by 48. So it's a larger horizontal image. It, honestly, you could use anything. So if you do want to do that full HD image and you want to do uh, 1080 and you can set that to vertical so by default that would be 1920 by 1080 you can set this to anything you want and it's just going to take that much longer to create or not and again just like the the print options you can you can actually scale it so if i wanted to zoom to 100 percent of actual size i can know that everything that prints will be to scale now this is a 3d view and it doesn't necessarily matter in 3d and it's kind of wishy-washy in 3D, but if I'm in a plan view that's at one eighth of an inch and I print this to 100% the actual size, my print will be 100%. It will be to scale at one eighth of an inch. But if it's an image, I'm probably just going to want to take one little snapshot. Maybe I'm using visible portion of current view and I'm setting those pixels to exactly what I want so it can be a high enough resolution to show up where I need to. The different file formats here, whether it's a shaded or non-shaded, you can change these. If you're just trying to get a quick image, you don't necessarily need to, but if you want like a really nice looking image, maybe you choose a PNG, it's kind of up to you. And that will do it for the image. I'll hit okay, just so we can see it. I'll go back to my desktop and there's my image. There it is, I'll open it and there it is. I, I've seen the full extents of the view, which does include the levels. So if I were to zoom extents by double clicking my middle mouse button, I can see everything that would print in the current window. Going back to export, we can see reports. And again, this is another form of a database or just pulling data out of your model. You can save a schedule or a specific room and area data as a report. This is something you can save out periodically and track over time. That's nice. But at the bottom here, we have these options. And some of these options we've seen already. So the different export options that we have with the CAD file, we already went over this, but it's just there at the bottom as a separate options tab. So not the most exciting thing ever, but you will pretty often have to export to CAD, FBX, whatever it might be. 
So I sure hope you learned something in this video for exporting. If you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Also subscribe. I sure hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching.